For two decades in the Southeast Texas real estate industry, Dana makes buying or selling your home simple. Dana is here this afternoon to answer your questions. Call now, 409-896-KLVI or 800-330-KLVI. God bless Texas. Well, well hello, hello Southeast, Southeast Texas. Texas. Happy Father's, Father's Day weekend. weekend. How exciting to be able to celebrate those dads in our lives. And um, we're, we're excited, excited to be able to be here and talk a little bit about the market. market. But also, also you, you want to call and give a shout, shout out to your dad, dad on air. 896-5584. We'd love to hear from you. Or if you have any questions about, hey, what's going on in this market? Give, give us a call. call. I've got Christy Dory in here with First Financial Bank. Bank. She's going to give us a little bit of an update about what are the interest rates doing and how does that really impact if you're looking to purchase a home. We have a lot of exciting things we're going to talk about. I'm going to give you a little bit of a market update as to what's going on in the real estate market in Southeast Texas. But before we do that, I'm going to give the floor to Christy and let her tell you a little bit about yourself. So she's Christy Dorian with First Financial Tell, Tell us a little, little bit about you, Christy. Hey, Dana. Thanks, thanks for, for having, having me back. back. Uh, my name is Christy Dorian. I've been with uh, First Financial Bank for a little over a year. I've been in the mortgage lending industry for going on, I think it's going on 13 years now, um, as, as a loan officer. officer. And uh, so during that time, we've seen a lot, uh, a lot of changes in the market. What goes up must come down. So um, <clears throat> just love to serve my community, born and raised in Southeast Texas. And I love to uh, connect with buyers and educate them about um, just how to meet all their goals and uh, kind of how to think outside the box whenever we run across some of the many challenges that, that lie ahead in the uh, purchase process or the refinance process. But, yeah. yeah, I'd have to say one of my favorite things about you, Christy, is that you do not put everyone in the same box. Um, one of the things that I've seen over the last year working with you uh, in our office is that you look at every single person's situation and you adapt to that. Yeah, there's, there are different ways you can handle it. Over the 13 years that I have been doing this, you kind of, I mean, you've never seen it all, but but, but you learn something, something new with every transaction, and, and it's another piece of the puzzle that you can use whenever you're working with the next borrower and say, okay, well, we, you know, we, we might be able to structure things this way or do the, you know, just think, think outside the box a little bit, and I love doing that. Yeah. Uh, and when, when it all comes together, uh, it's, it's a great feeling. Absolutely. Now, do you, you want to give a shout out to your dad? dad? Oh, Dad, if you're listening, I love you. My dad's name is Johnny Burton. And, and he's, he's the, the best, best dad, dad ever. <laughs> yeah. dad. I have a pretty good one, too. Roland Mendoza. For all of you people out there in Southeast Texas, I will tell you, you probably know my dad. <laughs> we go places and everyone knows him, especially if you're in the Mid-County area. Um, that's where I was born and raised. So um, happy Father's Day, Dad. I am so blessed to have been um, born in that family. I'm the oldest of five children. And um, let me just say, we had an incredible dad. But I have some other dads in my lives as well, in our life as well. I've got my husband, Ken, who has been the best dad to my two children. Um, he is awesome. And then my son and son-in-law, who's really, I call him my son too, uh, Kendall and Ryan, who have um, become dads um, and are experiencing being a dad for the first time, and it is such a joy as a mom to get to watch your boys, your men um, become dads and how they interact with those babies. It's just beautiful. And so, happy Father's Day, Roland Mendoza, Ken Simmons, Kendall Simmons, and Ryan Hamilton. I hope you have a, a great Father's Day tomorrow. Um, but, but let's, let's get, get on to our market. market. So what's going on? on? I want to give you guys a little bit of an update. So we know that some changes are happening. Um, I was in a um, real estate conference in Utah uh, this past week as things started changing pretty rapidly. Uh, it was really great to be amongst peers um, that you really trust and who are um, the top of their market all over uh, our area. And so it was great to be able to um, have conversations with them about the impact that we could see and what would happen. But one thing is clear. Real estate is local. You know, you hear about 
all of the national um, news talking about things and giving you input. But let me just tell you, I've been doing this almost 30 years, um, and I can attest to the fact that when things have happened in the national market, that here in Southeast Texas, we've been a little bit protected from that. Um, I feel like that's going to be the case again. Do I think we're going to have an impact? Of course. Um, absolutely. We're going to see some changes and we're going to see um, potentially a little bit of a softening in our market. But I think we have room for that. Um, when we look at our closings uh, as things have recently closed, our most recent statistics, we can see that we still have just about two months of inventory. And, and while our market, market um, is kind of localized, too, I can, I can even break it down from Jefferson County to Hardin County to Orange County. County, County. Um, and, and what's really, really helpful is we can even break it down to your neighborhood. neighborhood. So, so if you have questions to say, hey, Dana, I really want to know what is the market like in my little neighborhood. It's going to be different than across the city. Um, and so we can narrow that down for you and give you specific information on what's going on. Now, just like Greg Boswick can't really completely predict the future, we can't either. Um, we give you our best guess, our best estimate, based on what we know, based on what we see. And so that's what we like to do for you, is give you an educated um, response and what you can expect. So what is going on? So when you look at the entire MLS, we have about 386 closings last month. Um, in Jefferson County, uh, we have increased our listings. We have a 36% increase in our active listings, which is pretty common this time of year. Um, we start to see people who are going to be ready to move during the summer. So, so it's not any different than what we've seen year over year in that we are seeing an increase in, in the number of listings, which is really a good thing. We have a ton of buyers who have been looking for property who still need a home. And so when you only have two months of inventory, which in Jefferson County it's only 2.2 months of inventory, that's really still a seller's market. And so an even market would get us to about five or six months. Um, and that would put us in a position that it was a more even market. So Jefferson County, we have 2.2 months of inventory. Our closed sales are up by 15%. And so that's a really good thing. Our, our median price, sales price, is $205,000, which is up 10%. That's a, that's a good number. When we get to Hardin County, we see the same thing, some really good numbers. We have 2.1 months of inventory. Um, and, and we see, see the median price there is at $305,000. So a lot of new construction going on in Hardin County, which is pushing that average sales price up a bit. Orange County, we see 2.8 months of inventory um, and the median price at $195,000. When I'm in Utah talking to everyone else in the nation, and, and we're, we're talking, talking about, about our average sales, sales price. price. We are so affordable compared to, uh, I'll tell you, the majority of them I would hear would be uh, 500000 was low <laughs> for a median sales price. The majority of them were 700000 up to a million dollars for average sales prices. So in Southeast Texas, that's the benefit. That's part of the reason why we're not impacted in the same way because, because our median sales price is far more affordable. So, so how, how does that impact you? you? Well, well, let me tell you, you as a real estate professional, I'm also a real estate investor. I, last week, still closed on a property that I'm going to use for a rental property. In two weeks, a couple weeks, I'm closing on a property that I'm going to use as a flip. So I'm still in the market. I still believe real estate is a great investment. Um, not just because I sell it, but because that's what I use to build long-term wealth. It's also what over 90% of millionaires do to build their long-term wealth. Real estate is a long-term investment. And if you're interested in that, 
that's the place you can go that you can see, especially here in Southeast Texas, we've seen continual growth since I've been in this business. Now, in 2008, did we see a little bit of a dip? Absolutely. The nation saw a pretty big dip. But in Southeast Texas, we did see a bit, a bit of a dip, but not to the same percentages. But we've also seen our um, prices recover pretty well as well. So the market is still good. So if that's the question and you want to know, hey, how's the market? The market is still good. But we want to talk about how do the changes that have happened in the last week or so, how do they impact you? What does that mean dollar for dollar? So, so when, when we come, come back, back Christy is going to break it down for us. She's, she's going to give us some ideas of what is the difference. difference. What does that price increase, that interest rate increase, what does that look like? Um, and give you some specifics. If you have any questions that you have for Christy or for me, please give us a call at 409-896-5584, and we would love to visit with you. Um, this is the Dana Simmons Show. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Page show on News Talk 560 KLVI. To join the conversation, call 409 896 KLVI or 800 330 KLVI. Welcome, Welcome back. back. This, this is Dana Simmons, Simmons and, and we are talking, talking about what everyone is asking me wherever I go. <laughs> How's the market, Dana? How's the market? How's this market change? How are these changes going to impact us in Southeast Texas? So I wanted to just address that with you guys. If you have specific questions and you want to ask, please don't hesitate to give us a call. We'd love to visit with you. But let me tell you my thought. My thoughts are that we're going to be okay. 
Do now, I think it might impact us slightly? Absolutely. Um, how can you say it won't? There will be those people who were approved who may no longer get approved with if they were at the bottom of the market. It may be that they were at the bottom of the price ranges, and that might be challenging for them. But there are ways we can walk through that and help them. But I don't know if you remember, if you've been listening, the last several weeks I've had Jessica Hill with Orange County Economic Development uh, in, in Orange, Orange County, County, and, and also Christy Young, Young with the Beaumont, Beaumont Chamber of Commerce Economic Development, and, and the two of them have been talking about all the positive things we have coming here in Southeast Texas. Texas. If, if I, I remember correctly, correctly combined, it's $45 billion, with a B, dollars that we have coming to Southeast Texas. Texas. Now, that, that correlates into temporary jobs, and it also correlates into permanent jobs. jobs. So, so that will definitely be impacting the housing market as we need properties for them to live, places for them to live, um, short term and then again long term. Those jobs that come that create long term jobs residually create additional long term jobs. So what I see here in Southeast Texas is very different than what you see across the nation. We just talked about it in our last segment, the affordability of our homes. It is incredibly affordable compared to the homes across the nation. That makes a, a, an impact not as strong. If you're buying a million dollar house and you see a 1% increase on the interest rate, um, yeah, that's going to impact you a lot more than if you're looking at a $250,000, a $350,000 house. So, Christy, that's what I wanted you to kind of talk to our listeners about. So let's talk about what is the difference and how does that come down to dollar and cents for, for people who are out there? Okay, yeah, that's a, a great question. So I was on vacation uh, in Boston and then New York uh, last week whenever rates kind of rapidly increased. It was, uh, you know, a lot of the articles and things that you would hear in the news say that nothing that uh, drastic has happened since like 1994. Some were saying since, you know, the, the Fed since 1994, interest rates since 1980 something. And so we did kind of have a historic week. Yeah. Um, but you and I were talking on the break and the median house price in Boston, I don't even know what it is in New York, but median house price I have in-laws that live there. They can't buy for less than a million. And we're talking um, just very small single family dwellings or multiple family dwellings, right. which is, it's very common up there. So um, let me tell what you, they seen, I was in Utah. You want to talk Deer? it was Deer Valley. Oh my goodness. Um, you got um, a studio apartment for $895,000. Yes. Crazy. That's a studio apartment. I <laughs> was in shock. I was like, wow. We can't fathom that. I've seen, I purchased in Mid-County in 2018, and I've probably gained 100000 in equity in that short amount of time. So I can't right. imagine, you know, what some of the challenges people in those areas like Utah, Boston, New York, um, California, Colorado yeah. are feeling. But, um, but bringing it back to our area, whenever you're looking, okay, so where we were last week, we were around 5.5% on a conventional with, um, there's lots of variables, remember, that go into determining your interest rate. But let's say last week on a $250,000 purchase, we'll look at $250,000, $350,000, and $450,000. Where we were then was 5.5% maybe. Where we are now, right now, is 6.125. And in each of those three price ranges, we're looking at about a $100 uh, increase on the payment in the two fifty dollars range. A 133 increase in the 350 range and a 170 increase. So <clears throat> it can happen that fast and you can lose $100 on your monthly payment, uh, uh, you know, which are qualified. And that may take your approval range down because we're always looking at your debt ratio and how the housing payment affects that. Um, and we have to keep everything within the eligibility guidelines. So um, if you were taken out of your price range, there's be, just because of the interest rate increase, there are some things that we can look at. We can look at buying that rate back down to 5.5% if you have additional funds for closing. Or if you're in your option period in the middle you know, of a rate increase and now your lender gets the contract, locks you and say, okay, well, you no longer qualify for this price range, 
there still be, may be ways to work that out. We can buy the rate back down by having you pay points on your interest rate. Yeah, and so that's the, the part that I love that you do is you look at, okay, so what's the situation? And for someone to buy the rate down, explain how that happens and what the, the costs are typically um, that go in that direction and how it's a benefit as you get longer term more so than if you're just going to be in a house short term. Okay, yeah. So whenever we as loan officers are looking at uh, your loan application, we're going to look at things like your down payment, which is the loan to value ratio. We're going to look at your credit score, the type of loan that you're um, getting into, and all of these different factors go into determining the rate. And each day, and lately multiple times a day, our investors give us a, a list of interest rates that may range <clears throat> all the way up to 7.25 now, and then maybe as far down as 4.125. I don't know exactly what the range is. But you have increments of an eighth of a point all the way, you know, from, from the top to the bottom. And each of those interest rates are ascribed a price based on your risk factors. And I know this is kind of complicated, but basically, you know, we're going to price you somewhere in the middle. It's called the par interest rate. That means you're not paying points to buy that interest rate down. But you always have the option to buy it down. Um, so, like, let's say this week par was 6.125. If you wanted to look at the 5.875, you might be paying a half a point for that. And a half a point is 0.005% or 0.005 of your loan amount. Right. And it's so it, it, depending on how much you're financing, it might be, uh, you know, you can get a little bit lower rate by paying 500 or, or 5,000. There are, there's a lot of different flexibility in there. And we just kind of, usually what I'll do with a borrower is I'll break it down and say, Here's your rate and payment. If you want to go down a little bit, here's your monthly payment, and here's how it would change your estimated funds for closing. Yeah, I love that because you can get creative. So let's say you were going to put 10% down, but instead you want to put 5% down and you want to buy your rate down. Yeah, that's Because you so, know that's going to be your house for a very long time or you're anticipating staying in that house 10 or 15 years. So absolutely. So buying that rate down for a long-term investment makes complete sense. And so you would sit down with them, look at their specific plan for them, and then be able to give them guidance and direction on what's going to be better. Yeah, and so to you know, buy the rate down, if if that's not a good uh, financial decision for you because you're only going to be in the house for a few years and you're really not going to realize those savings. I mean, your monthly payment's going to be less, of course, but where you really save over is is over the long term. Whenever you have a lower interest rate, you're going to save dozens or uh, sometimes many dozens of thousands of dollars by right. going from even a 6.125 to a 6. Uh, but those savings aren't realized until you hit, you know, maybe 15, 20, 25, 30 years. Um, so like you said, if, if you were already, if you were a buyer and you came to me and you were like, we're going to put 10% down, that's already what we were planning on doing. Well, then, you know, we can look at 5% down, paying down the rate, or we can also look at FHA. If you're in the right price range, um, there are challenges with FHA sometimes on appraisals. So the lower the price range that, you know, drops, the more likely we're going to have appraisal issues. But let's say you are already in a 350000 price range and you're, you told me that you wanted to do 10% down. Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't like about FHA is that uh, mortgage insurance is required for the life of the loan. Well, not when you put 10% down. It is going to cancel yeah. eventually. And the interest rate is lower on FHA than it is on conventional, especially right now. So that may be a solution. So let's say someone's out there and they're just unsure what to do. Um, the, the thing that they need to know is they need to know all of their options. Yeah. Just don't don't make a decision until you let a professional run your credit and say, here's here's what you're looking at right now. Yeah. And by this time next year, we may be in a state of deflation. It may be um, time to refinance. If you get into the market right now and you're at a higher interest rate, just just remember things things will eventually level and um, hopefully come down again. It may not ever come down back down to in our lifetime to where it was during COVID, where you could buy for two percent. Yeah. Um, but 
That was crazy. And I will tell you, for a very long time, we've been in a situation where our interest rates were historic. Um, And we knew they couldn't stay there forever. And we knew they wouldn't stay there forever. It is so hard for me to wrap my head around the fact that just January 1 of this year, I could get a 30-year for 2.875. Or 2.65. Right. It's insane. It sounds like, what, did that really happen? But But 15 years ago, you know, we were at 7 and 8%. So it's it's funny how over time you see the difference in in where interest rates go. They're going to go up and they're going to go down. Um, But even at the interest rate where we are in the sixes, um, there's a difference in purchasing and creating equity versus renting. And when yeah. we come back, we're going to have that question answered. What should I rent or should I buy? We're going to talk through all of that. So don't go away. Come back. This is Dana Simmons with the Dana Simmons Show. Welcome back. This is Dana Simmons, and I am joined by Christy Dorian with First Financial Bank, and we are talking about the question that's on everyone's mind, or at least everyone who talks to me. Uh, How's the market? And we've been talking about um, what's going on in our um, the the situation with the rise in the interest rate, and how is it impacting us here locally. Um, And so if you've missed any of our segment and you want to go back and listen, we have this show will be posted on the KLVI 
um, website and you can go back to any of our shows and listen to the podcast and be able to see exactly what we've talked about. For instance, we were talking about Jessica Hill with the Orange County, she's the Orange County um, Economic Development She's the director. Executive director. Executive director. She's, I think that's her a, official title. She's important. She's very important. <laughs> she has lots of great information. And she was on our show, and she was talking about all that's coming to Orange County. And then Christy Young. She's the Beaumont Chamber of Commerce Economic Development Coordinator. And she, too, shared all the things that are coming to Southeast Texas. Um, and so if you want to go back and listen to those, it talks about how we're going to have $45 billion worth of economic growth just in our area. That That's just unheard of. Yes. When you go sense. across the United States, most people don't have that much coming to their areas. So we have so much to look forward to and so many great things on the horizon. So we want to focus on all of the good things that are coming. We have to address the things that we see that are issues, of course. But we want to talk about how does that impact us. So for me... I think that while we may see a little bit of a, um, an increase in our number of listings, um, our inventory may increase a little bit, which really we need that to yeah. happen. Our we need buyers. inflation to slow and the market to level. And, yeah. yeah, and so uh, as a real estate investor, I'm still investing. Um, I just closed on one that I'm going to use as a rental property last week, and I'm closing in a couple of weeks on one that I'm about to flip. So. Um, I have such confidence in the market that I'm still in the market. Yeah. I'm still working and buying and, and building long-term well by investing in real estate. So but, many opportunities there and, for people that are ready to invest. But it really <clears throat> is. And, so, and some people think, well, I don't have enough money to invest. So let me tell you, when Ken and I bought our first investment property, we did not have a lot of money. But we had people who wanted to help us, and we did what was needed when we were directed, here's what you need to do to buy your first rental property. And the opportunity came and we grabbed it. And it was such a blessing to be able to start that way. Yeah. So when you look at other investments and you see the way they go up and down and up and down, it's a challenge. But in real estate, if you look over the last 30 years, look at what your parents paid for their house and what they can sell it for now. Yeah. That's another one of those um, times to realize that, you know, knowing where we came from is going to help us navigate our way through exactly. where we're at now. Even though I think we're in unprecedented times and You're a right. lot shifted and a lot changed in the world, especially uh, after the pandemic. And I think we're going to have some challenges, but everywhere there are challenges, there are tons of opportunities. opportunities. Right. And uh, and First Financial Bank is there to, um, you know, your community lenders, your uh, financial institutions are there to help you Yeah, and walk through the times like this. And the situation to... is First Financial is a Texas bank. Yes. So it's they understand the situation in Texas. And I've talked to um, Stephen Lee, who is um, over all of the banks here in Southeast Texas, and, and he is looking into what can we do to help people here. And yes. so just know yeah, that they are working on that. And and you're right, Christy, when you have challenges, okay, that is the time to say, okay, how do we overcome that? Yeah. What well, when you have a challenge, how do you look at it? Do you look at it as oh Eeyore? Yeah. Oh my. We just can't. Yeah. Can't or do it now. Do you say, you know, what opportunities, what can we do to overcome the situation? And make the best of it. And so for many of us, that's what we did during the pandemic. We made the best of what we could in the moment. And you shift and you change and you you um, apply new rules. <laughs> yeah. One of the best, biggest opportunities now is uh, so, so many people have seen a growth, an unprecedented growth in their equity. Um, you can use that equity if you want to improve your home, send your children to college, invest do whatever. Invest in real estate. Invest in real estate. <laughs> Exactly. You can, um, you know, if, if you've seen a short term increase in your equity, you can borrow that equity and use it um, for, for really any purpose. Under That's the right. Sun. Can, and we've seen great growth in uh, equity in our area. Um, so the question is, though, that I have a lot of people asking is, is now the time to buy? Well, if you are renting, um, you, you know, there are benefits to renting. You, you don't really have maintenance costs. Your landlord does that. 
Um, you don't have a down payment. You have flexibility to move based on your lease agreement. Um, and you could care less about property value <laughs> because uh, you have no interest in it. But other than you might get a little frustrated when you realize how uh, much the equity has grown for your landlord. That's and right. <clears throat> and so when we're talking about the increase in the interest rate, and we're like, wow, I don't want to pay that interest. Well, when you're paying interest, you're buying the ability to live in a home that you own. When you are renting, you're really paying 100% interest. Yes. Because you're not building any equity. So there are benefits, and there are some people who must lease and rent, and I get that, and I'm the beneficiary of that because I own rental property. But if you're able to purchase and you are in a position to do that, you are beginning to build wealth. That's an opportunity whenever you can um, begin appreciating in your investment, not only for what you're putting into it, but just like your parents over 30 years of putting in money into their house, but also time has increased the value of those homes. So appreciation of that home sales price is giving people the opportunity to build equity, just like you were talking about, that they can use to do something else. We've seen a 14.6% increase in 2021. What other investment opportunity yeah. do you see a return like that? There really aren't many. Insane. Every month, you're increasing your equity when you pay towards your note. Um, and then during tax time, you have advantages there as well. Um, there are things that you can talk to your tax preparer about, ways that you can utilize some of your expenses to help you on your taxes as well. Yeah, Dana, did you know too? Um, no, there's a, I know there's probably a lot of controversy that surrounds things like reverse mortgages but it can actually be an income producing tool. When you get to a point in your life, and especially if you're seeing the, um, the value of your investments rapidly decrease, stop drawing out of retirement, draw out of the equity on your home and use that as your monthly income. Yeah, I love that creative <clears throat> thinking there, Christy. Um, and that is one of the reasons why if someone has questions, I'd love for them to give you a call um, to be able to talk about, so here's my situation. What do you see that you give them options just like that? Okay. If your, your retirement is not seeing such a great increase right now. Yeah. There are issues stop there. Drawing on it. Just how, how can we fix that? That's right. Yeah. Go. And your equity and your home is an untapped, unused asset. Right. So I know that the conventional thought says be debt free. Right. Pay that mortgage off. But when you have $500,000 sitting there at your fingertips that, um, that you can use, you at, you want to at least consider using it. Options. Yeah. That's all you're trying to say. It may not be the best option for one person, but it may be the best option for right. someone else. Absolutely. I have a friend who her mom was in a, a situation, and that's how she made it through, was through that, yeah. um, that situation exactly right there. The other thing that homeownership gives you is the freedom to personalize your house however you choose. You can do what you want to it. You can paint your daughter's room pink. <laughs> or your own. <laughs> or your own. That's exactly right. So it gives you options on what you can do um, on that. So here's the thing, though. Every decision is personal. And what's best for one person is not going to be what's best for another. So if you want to sit down and visit about, okay, here is my situation. Is it better for me to rent? Or is it better for me to go ahead and buy? You can sit down and talk with Christy, and Christy can give you all of the information on what you need to know. And then you can sit down and talk with our team as well. Um, our office number is 409-866-8326. Um, or you can go to DanaSimmonsRealEstate.com, and um, if you click on anything there where it says speak to someone, they'll be able to visit with you, set an appointment for us to sit down, talk with you face to face and be able to say what's best for you. We don't want to make that decision. We want to guide you through the process for you to make the most educated decision for you and your family. Yes. And that's what's critical for us. We want to look out for you. So if that's your situation, you just don't know what you should do. Talk to someone who is going to do that for you. Talk to a mortgage lender. Talk to a real estate broker. Talk to a real estate agent. Let them give you um, just different information so that you can make that decision. 
We're going to continue this conversation about how's the market, um, so you're not going to want to leave. Stay tuned. This is Dana Simmons with The Dana Simmons Show. Simmons, and I am joined today by Christy Dorian with First Financial Bank, and we've been talking about how's the market. So in our first segment, we talked a little bit about what is the market like. So we looked at our closed statistics for May, uh, and the market is still doing very well here in Southeast Texas. We still have a very low inventory of two months about uh, across Jefferson, Hardin, and Orange counties. Um, we're still seeing an increase in values um, throughout the area with price ranges from about 200000 in uh, Jefferson County is kind of our average, and then about 300000 in Lumberton as about the average, um, and somewhere around 200000 in Orange County as well. So if you're thinking about buying, it is still a great time to buy. Christy also went over what are the differences in what we had about a week and a half ago versus what's just happened in the interest rate change. So if you have any questions or thoughts about that, she went through uh, each price point and gave us a summary of what did that do to the bottom line, to your mortgage payment. So if you have questions about, okay, what can I now qualify for? What situation should I do? How might I get that rate down? Christy shared with us some different things that she could do to help you get that rate down. 
So if you have any questions, Christy, what is the best way for someone to contact you for you to be able to kind of share with them and guide them through the process, sit down with them, go through their specific situation and be able to know what that is? Yeah, so the best way to reach me is my work cell phone, which is 409-238-1030. And you can call or text me anytime there. Um, you can also Google me. Um, if you Google Christy Dorian, apply online, it'll take you right to the First Financial website. Um, it'll My picture will pop up and you can click on a link to apply now. Or you can just, um, it has my contact information. You can call me at the office or on the cell phone anytime. Okay, Christy. There are a lot of ways to spell Christy. Oh, good point, Dana. Yes. D A Y N A. <laughs> <laughs> so, can you tell everyone how to spell Christy? It's a K R I S T I. Yes. Christy, but... and then Dorian is D. Just don't even get me started. D O U R I A N. So, yeah. Yeah. Christy Google Dorian. is our friend, isn't it, though? <laughs> it I is. mean, anytime you need anything, what do we do? But you can also find me on the Dana Simmons website. That's exactly so. right. And if you <laughs> Google Dana Simmons, you could even spell my name incorrectly. And it'll still come and up. And it's on. still going to come up because I have an incredibly smart husband who has done all of that. And, and oh, Ken, again, there's only one way to spell Ken. Uh, no, well, only one way for <laughs> us to spell Ken, and that's G R E A T. Yes. Because he's awesome. Um, but so if you need anything from us, don't hesitate to call. Um, our telephone number is 409 866 8326, which is 409-866-TEAM, um, or you can go to our website, danasimmonsrealestate.com, or Google me, Dana Simmons, and you will uh, be connected right there to our website, and it'll also show you where our office is. But So let's talk a little bit more about the, the real estate side of things. We um, also went into the fact that real estate is still a great investment, and so if you're thinking about investing in real estate, I'm doing it. Um, so how am I doing it? Some people ask me that. They're like, so how do you manage that? So you can get a commercial loan if you are going to be using the property as a rental. Um, now that's going to require a 20% down payment. Um, and then uh, they'll do the rest of the financing. Uh, the other side talk of it. Talk about a home equity loan for that 20% down. That's exactly right. Whenever we talk about that, you said with the way prices have appreciated, if that's something you want to do, because we're talking about the fact that real estate is a great long-term investment. Now, it may not be something that in a year or two, you can get all of your money back out of. So let me just say, don't do it for a short term yeah. if you're going to do a rental. Um, while we've seen great increases over the last couple of years, um, typically in Southeast Texas, we see a 3 to 6% increase annually. Now, the last two years, we've seen greater increases than that, but that's not typical. Um, and I anticipate we're going to go back probably to the 3 to 6%. Hey, I'm good with that over time. Dana, what about, too, um, the Airbnb type opportunities yeah. with, and especially with all of the, the plant expansions and the port, the, all of the business that's that you were talking about, that Absolutely. Jessica was talking about. And uh, Ken and I have uh, dipped our toe into that market as well. And it has been a great opportunity. Um, with that, you, of course, have to furnish the home. But that is another good investment. You get a higher rent rate over time. And that allows you, again, to have someone else paying your equity. And so there are so many different options that if someone said, you know, I'm thinking about um, investing in real estate. Um, let's talk about how you can do that. Um, I have long-term rental. I have Airbnb short-term rentals. Um, and then I also do flips. So I have personal experience in that. And we can walk you through that. First Financial has been my lender in all of those. So the other thing on that, um, the flips that I typically do, I have a home equity line of credit. That's another thing that um, First Financial does. You talked about you have the equity in your home. Utilize that equity to make more money by investing in real estate. So I take a little bit of the equity out of that. I buy my flip house. We rehabilitate it. Then we sell it, pay that home equity line back, 
And then the goal, of course, is to have additional funds after that that is um, profit. Um, the next one. That's exactly right. And then you can use that for the next one. And that is a way to begin to, to grow um, your real estate portfolio. And it, and it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we didn't do it overnight. It's a little bit at a time. But if that's something that you're interested in, we'd love the opportunity to sit and talk to you about that. I know, Christy, you've had opportunities to do some of those second homes with um, people as well. Yes. And that's something that you can do. <clears throat> but you also, if it's something that you think is better served by someone else in your company, Yes, I love that about First Financial Bank. If 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 I can't fit you into the cookie cutter mold on secondary markets, that's where we're going to sell the servicing of your loan after closing. Um, then uh, we always want to make a long term relationship. Right. Every and you know every instance that we can. So I'm going to send you to one of our competent and capable in house lenders in either our commercial department or our real estate uh, residential department. Yeah, that is that is the thing about First Financial that is a gift, is that not only are they across all of Southeast Texas, so that there's a branch in almost every single city, and one coming soon in Lumberton. So Lumberton, Yeah, yes. but you also have different loan programs that if they can't fit into one, there are so many other buckets. Yes, um, we were talking on the break about the bridge loan. The bridge loan is a great um, uh, tool to use right now in these uh you know, seller markets where you're up against multiple buyers trying to make an offer on a particular property. And uh, if a seller sees you coming in with a contingency, that means I have to sell my house before I can close on this, then uh, they may choose another offer over yours because those, uh, you know, the more layers of complications, the more, complica yeah, the more complicated the yeah. transaction can be sometimes. And That's it's, exactly it's a stressful, right. you know, contingencies can be stressful. But, um, but if that's you and you want to uh, see if you can qualify for a bridge loan, that's a short-term loan where you don't have to sell your house. We will give you the funds to purchase the new house. And then whenever you close on that and sell your departing home, that's whenever you can refi. That's exactly right. So here today, we've talked about how's the market. I hope we've given you options. I hope we've educated you on different things and what's going on in Southeast Texas. And for us, it's giving you a, a, an opportunity to sit down and talk to us personally about your situation. So if you have any questions, Google me, Dana Simmons, and you can get to my website where you can get to me or you can get to Christy. And we would love the opportunity to sit down and look at what is the best thing for you. I just want to thank you for joining us today on the radio show. I want to tell all the dads out there, happy, happy Father's, Father's Day. Day.